Hello everyone, so it's been a really long time since I sat down and filmed like a talking video and I've gotten a lot of requests to do like a self-love, confidence kind of video and I've been wanting to do that for a while. So, it's Sunday morning, I just had my tea, my window's open and I thought why not film it this morning. So I just wanted to say that this is going to be less about like my journey and experience and more about like what I've learned from my experience um but i will say i do struggle with mental illness and that's something that unfortunately does not go away and no matter how good of a mental state you're in that is something that you will struggle with if you do struggle with that so that's something that i do experience on the daily but it's less about learning how to like fix mental illness and like mental stability and more about learning how to cope with it and like be the best version of yourself and the most positive and happy version of yourself so, with that being said, here are my tips to learning how to love yourself and gaining confidence. So my first tip is get to know yourself, which might sound kind of dumb, but honestly, it's easy to kind of get into a routine and not really learn about yourself and experience things. I think it's important to ask yourself, like, who are you and who you want to be, and what do you like to do? Like, are you athletic? Do you like doing artistic things or both just asking yourself like questions like that and learning about yourself and learning what kind of activities you like to do and what like makes you happiest I don't really know how else to elaborate on that but just learning what you like to do learning what kind of person you are what makes your soul thrive and like that sounds cheesy but like honestly though what makes you happiest and what makes you excited about living and it's also important to ask yourself like who are you in this moment who do you want to be and what can you do to achieve that goal? And that's not to say I want to be like so and so and try to be like somebody else, but like within who you are and like where you want to be as a person, I think it's important to ask yourself that and like what are you doing now to achieve that? And if you aren't doing anything now to achieve that, what can you do to get to the place that you want to be? Another thing is get in tune with your emotions and your feelings and spend time with yourself and for people who are introverts that's you know not a problem and people who are extroverts like that might be more of an issue but I think it's important for both people to learn how to like be around people and also spend time with yourself and enjoy it like not just sulk and sit by yourself but like enjoy time by yourself and that does take some figuring out like what do you like to do by yourself like what do you enjoy and it could be like painting, walking, exercising, cooking, I don't know, anything, just activities that you like to do and things that you can do by yourself and that help you clear your mind but also at the same time kind of figure things out and get in tune with like what you're thinking and how you're feeling. I think it's important to like find these emotions like what I was just saying but also kind of put them out there whether that's for me I journal a lot I journal every day and I think that's helped me a lot I think other people find that that has helped them but for some people it may not be writing it could be singing talking by yourself talking with a parent or a friend going for a walk and just thinking or just or meditating I think it's important to be able to spend time by yourself and enjoy quality time by yourself and not have to rely on other people to feel good doing something. And with all of this being said about learning about yourself and figuring out what you like to do and getting in tune with your emotions and your feelings and experiencing all of this, I think it's important to accept yourself like in the now. So like accept yourself where you are in the moment and what kind of a past you come from because you can't change that but it helps you shape who you are and it can help you learn about yourself from what your experience is and also to accept yourself in the future if that makes sense but like the most important thing is to like accept yourself whatever stage you're at right now whether you are almost at your goal whatever that may be or if you're just starting and you haven't done anything to achieve it like it's important to like be happy with yourself where you are unfortunately it doesn't work this way but you're not gonna wake up one morning and be like wow like i'm fucking awesome like and i love myself you know like i'm great and i mean it'd be cool if it worked that way and you could wake up and just be like you know happy about yourself but unfortunately it doesn't work that way so like it's a process and you will get nowhere if you're like i'll be happy once i reach this or once i look like this or once i'm this kind of a person like it doesn't work like that in order to like really love yourself and like be confident you have to accept yourself no matter what stage you're at 
so that you can vary and you'll be fluid and like you can adapt to like who you are if that makes sense accept and embrace like who you are in the moment and like I said, ask yourself who you want to be and what you can do to achieve that. But accepting yourself in the present is the first step in order to achieve your goals, whether that be physical or mental or just, I don't know, whatever, emotional, anything. And embrace where you are at and embrace how that can help you achieve your goals. Sorry, I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but it's like, I don't know how else to word it. Because it's not about loving yourself when you're at your best self. It's about loving yourself when you're in the process to becoming your best self. And I think that's the biggest thing is that people think like people think that it's like, oh, I'll be happy once I'm at this point. But the process of loving yourself is loving yourself every step of the way and trying to like enjoy the process of reaching your fullest potential. And the big thing regarding the topic of self-love is self-care. And I think a lot of misconceptions about self-love is like, oh, take a bath, you know, go for a walk. And it's like, I'm loving myself. Like, I mean, yes, that's part of it, but there's a lot more, there's a lot more to it than just taking care of yourself. Like, yes, that's a big part of it, but there's a lot more changes regarding mentality and what you actually do actively to like think about yourself and the way that you are. Sorry, that was like not English, but I hope that made sense. So anyways, self-care. In order to like reach this level of confidence and self-love, it's important to be fueling yourself correctly and sufficiently. Also taking care of yourself and in aspects of exercise, what you're eating, hygiene, and emotionally. As you guys probably know, if you have seen any of my videos, I'm vegan and I eat mostly whole foods and plant-based, obviously. But I mean, I obviously treat myself plenty and I fuel myself properly so that I can have energy to exercise and dance to my fullest potential and really like improve. That's a huge part of like physical and mental growth is fueling yourself properly. So make sure you're getting like all of your nutrients and just, you know, being healthy. While it's important to get your nutrients and for physical health, it's also just as important to, for your mental health to not be like rigid and strict and create rules about what you're eating. And in my opinion, personally, I mean, maybe people don't agree with this, but I think it's really important to treat yourself. And if you want something, eat it, listen to your body. If you want something sweet, have something sweet. You know, like I don't, don't overthink it. Just eat what you want. And that's part of mental health. Like it's not in my opinion, it's not healthy to be like, no, I can't have blah, 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 and just like create rules and stuff because that just doesn't lead to anything good. So for hygiene, like obviously, you know, the usual, it's just a nice thing to do is like change my sheets frequently and your pillowcases because that'll help with your skin and shower after you exercise and just shower in general, moisturize if you have dry skin and just like take care of your self physically the way that you need to because everybody's different. I have really dry skin so I always need to like moisturize and I don't wash my hair every day or even every other day but that's because I'm a dry person like I need to add moisture. Anyways so I guess this kind of could go along with getting to know yourself but like know what you need to do to take care of yourself and do that. And a big thing is exercise. So obviously I have a varied audience right now but for people who have a good relationship with exercise in their body and stuff, or you know, getting there. I think it's important to exercise because endorphins, man. I always feel, like I feel so much better when I exercise. Like obviously I have my rest days and days that I don't want to do anything, but like for the most part, like exercise makes me feel so much better. It starts my day nice. I train most days in the evening and I have like a few hours of um, ballet and I'm, you know, dancing in the evenings, but then in the morning I like to just spend like an hour or two cross training and doing some strength training things and you know getting strong and fit. Um, I also like doing yoga and Pilates and things so that's personally what I like to do. I also love to swim. So really it's just about what you like to do and I'm not saying like oh if you you know go outside and run four miles if you hate running like don't do that. Do what you like to do like especially when we're talking about mental health and when I'm saying exercise for your mental health, for endorphins. Um, I mean, obviously not just endorphins, but like 
I don't know, you know, it makes you feel good, it makes you feel happier, and in my opinion, I mean, there's science behind that, it is good for you, physically and mentally, so I think it's important to exercise if you're at a point where that's what you need to do. So find something you like to do, whether that's yoga or running or dancing or Zumba, soccer, basketball, I don't know, whatever you like to do, just get out there and move will make you feel good and that helps you feel more productive and just helps with everything. Exercise is great. Also on the topic of kind of exercise and health, like hydrate, I think that's a really important thing. Helps clear your skin, helps you have more energy. Drink lots of water, especially if you're exercising a lot and sweating a lot. There's a big bug on my curtain. I'm not too fond of that, so I think I'm gonna shut my window. One second. Hey there, bug. I'm not killing him, don't worry. Um. Um, so I was talking about hydration. Um. So yeah, it's important to drink water. Also, take your vitamins, because a lot of vitamins can affect your happiness, and if not, I don't know, like, scientific terms, but... So I know for me, personally, if I'm low on vitamin D, I'm like, I don't know, I just feel like down, and I don't feel my best self. Because they can make you feel all sorts of out of whack if they aren't at the right levels, and specific ones you may be like deficient in something and that does not help you um so anyways just a little reminder because i'm a mom take your vitamins it's also important to find an outlet like something that you can do that just clears your head when you're done you're like wow like i feel refreshed and you notice that you really weren't like thinking like you were just so in the moment and for me this is painting like when i'm painting i just kind of like I don't know, lose everything, like I'm not very good, but I still paint, it's still fun. And I kind of just like, I'm thinking, but at the same time I'm like clearing my head. And also with cooking, cooking is probably my number one thing that clears my head. I don't know how else to explain it. So I think it's important to find an outlet that you can do something that kind of distracts you and lets you put your focus elsewhere if you're perseverating on something. Whatever you like to do that distracts you and gives you an outlet to put your energy elsewhere for a little bit of time. So this sounds cheesy and this is an overused phrase, but I'm gonna use it anyways because it's true. So fake it till you make it. Like that's honestly such a big thing. If you're having negative thoughts about yourself and you just keep thinking them, like you're not getting anywhere. Like that's not doing anything for you. So like when you catch yourself thinking negatively about yourself or about who you are physically or mentally who you are as a person just stop them at the source and even if it's not true and you don't believe it just just throw those thoughts away and be like no like i'm fucking awesome like and go into specifics about why you like yourself even if it's like not entirely true like, accept and acknowledge these negative thoughts and then just throw them out and like i said like acknowledge them and be like okay th i'm thinking this but also this is not benefiting me in any way, so I'm gonna stop thinking this and replace it with a positive thought regarding the same thing. For example, if it's something about your physical appearance and you're like, I don't like this about myself, and so you acknowledge it and you're like, that's dumb, why don't I like this about myself? Then you can just be, you can change that thought and I enjoy this about myself because, and come up with something that you may possibly like about that feature or even if you don't, just tell yourself you do because it makes you unique, it makes you you. So switch out your negative thoughts with positive thoughts even if it's not true. Like even if you don't love yourself yet or like certain aspects of yourself, then just kind of switch your mentality about it. And even, like I said, it honestly probably won't be true at first and you'll be like, this is pointless. Repeating those thoughts over in your head, eventually you will come to believe it and you're like, this doesn't mean anything, like I'm unique and this makes me me. Um, okay, so another thing about accepting yourself and like faking it until you make it, I think it's important to get comfortable with your beauty and your appearance and who you are as a person so i've already talked about accepting who you are and like you know becoming who you want to be and um learning about yourself but regarding physical appearance like something that has helped me is like i'm really into photography i love taking photos i'm always taking photos i always have my camera with me i love taking photos of myself i also have like a tripod so like sometimes you can just set up like even a self-timer cam or just like take photos of yourself like i think that's like 
an awesome way to get used to the way you look and get used to your beauty and your appearance and love and accept that because you can figure out ways to capture your beauty and that's a good way to like acknowledge and get comfortable with your appearance I don't know that's something that I think is like beneficial is because then you get used to seeing yourself and it's also important to realize that beauty is not everything like you don't have to be beautiful or attractive like for people who don't feel that like yeah it's awesome if you do feel that first off you can change your mindset you know and learn to love yourself and learn to love your appearance but also it's important to know in the back of your head like it's not everything like there's so much more to life and so much more to friendships and being yourself that it does not revolve around the way you look like it's so much more important your qualities as a person and your kindness and who you are and your interests and what you do and like the legacy you live and that's so much more important than something as little as your physical appearance and so I think that's an important thing to remember while trying to learn to love the way that you look is that that's not everything well yes like it's nice to look in the mirror and be like wow like I'm hot like this is great it's important to know that that's not everything you don't have to be beautiful or whatever like whatever you are originally wanting to be like you don't have to be that like you can just be beautiful because you're a beautiful person like and that often is that's like most about qualities like people aren't gonna be friends with you because you're a, an attractive person people are gonna be friends with you because they enjoy spending time with you and they enjoy your passions and things like that you know so there's so much more to it um okay so this is probably the biggest thing that people struggle with when it comes to self-love and gaining confidence is comparing yourself so i'm just gonna start off by this little quote that i like so um confidence isn't walking into a room and thinking you're better than everyone in there confidence is walking into a room and not feeling the need to compare yourself to anyone in there because you're confident enough in who you are to not need to compare yourself to anyone so I think that's an important thing to think about like it's not being like I'm better than everyone it's just about having enough like self-worth and self-confidence in who you are to not need to compare yourself to anyone and absolutely nothing good comes from comparing yourself because in case you did not know you are unique and you're a different person than everybody else you will never look like someone else you will never act like someone else because you're different people just like they will never act like you and they will never look like you because you're different people. In my opinion, I think that's pretty fucking awesome. Like, I will never look like someone else and vice versa. It's important to remember because a lot of people are like, oh my god, like, they're beautiful. I want to look like them. But at the same time, you are beautiful too. You can be equally beautiful but in different manners. You're never going to look like someone else or act like someone else. So you have to find that self-worth and like feeling of beauty within yourself and knowing your worth and your beauty in order to appreciate somebody else's. In my opinion, a way to stop comparing yourself is like when you notice yourself doing it, stop. And it, but acknowledge it at the same time. Be like, why am I comparing myself to her? What aspects of her do I not have or do I want to have? And be like, A, how can I achieve that if it's something not physical? You know what I mean? Because you're never going to like like I said, you're never going to look like someone, but if you're like, I love how kind they are, and it, you feel jealous about that, then be like, how can I be a kinder person? So I think that's a way that you can get out of the cycle of comparing yourself, um, but if it is physical, like I said, just acknowledge your beauty, but I'll, like have enough self-worth in yourself that you can be like, wow, she's a beautiful person, or he's a beautiful person or they're a beautiful person and be like acknowledge their beauty but also at the same time be like that doesn't mean anything about my beauty it just means that they're a beautiful person so yeah find inspiration when you catch yourself comparing yourself to someone stop but also acknowledge it and use that as inspiration to better yourself in a realistic way obviously not be like wow like i want to look like her i'm going to change my appearance not saying that but i mean in a realistic way that's healthy you can better yourself in a way and get inspired by somebody else to reach your fullest potential and become who you are. Um, I think another thing is being gentle with yourself and forgiving yourself. If there's anything about yourself that you feel makes you unworthy of love or undeserving of love or happiness, like I keep saying this, but acknowledge it and then stop it. Like we all make mistakes. 
we all have a past and we all have things in our past that we probably aren't proud of and we probably wish wouldn't happen but those are what make you who you are and that's what helps you in your journey and like learn to love yourself and learn to be who you are and just it makes you who you are like obviously it doesn't define you but it is an important aspect of how you learn to like grow and how you grow as a person so I think it's important to learn from that and move on and don't dwell on that and be like wow because I did this or because this happened to me I don't deserve to be loved or I don't deserve to be happy because that's just not true you can have a past and it can be a part of you but it doesn't have to define you and it doesn't mean anything about your present so learn from it and move on okay this is just kind of out of the blue but and it might sound crazy but like honestly spend more time naked like it might sound crazy to some people but like i think it's a really good way to like be comfortable in your own skin and just just be naked i don't know like just sleep naked if you're hanging around in your room like be naked shower take a bath like just spend as much time as you can naked. Like, I get for some people, like, when I'm at school, like, obviously I can't hang around naked all the time, but, like, when I'm at home, I love doing that. Like, and, like I said, it might sound crazy, but it really helps you become more comfortable with yourself. Also helps you sleep better. I don't know. Just be naked. It personally has helped me a lot in just being more comfortable with who I am and in my own skin, so. Another big thing is putting yourself first and learning how to put your needs above satisfying other people's needs. For me personally, I think that a big part of that is removing toxic people from your life. If there's somebody in your life that doesn't necessarily like need to be in your life and they're not benefiting you anyway and they don't bring out the best in you, if you just don't have a great relationship, there's no really need for them to be in your life. So I think it's something that you can maturely and respectfully handle by like distancing yourself from them and focus on your needs and what you want to do. Obviously, like you know, being humble and taking care of others, but at the same time, like, understanding that you are deserving of, like, attention and figure out what's best for you and not for your parents or your friends or your teachers and don't work to satisfy others, but work to satisfy yourself. And kind of going off of that, I think, put out the energy that you want to receive. So, if you're upset that you don't have the kind of friendships you want or the relationships in your life that you want, instead of dwelling on that and being like, damn, like I want like this these kind of people in my life. I want to do this with my friends and I don't I don't like my friends right now or whatever it is that you're wanting to change in your relationships, it's important to put out the energy you want to receive. So with that being said, like if you're dwelling on the fact that you don't have the kind of friendships you want, but you're not like portraying yourself as a person that you would want to be friends with, if that makes sense. So like Say that you want, I don't know, friends who you can travel with or uh, paint and explore with or something like that. Like, if you're just kind of reserved and you aren't really your true self, then nobody can come to you and you can't make those relationships because you have to be utterly and completely yourself in order to attract those kind of people in your life. You have to put yourself out there in a way that is like, I'm this kind of a person, look at me. Like, this is what I like to do. This is the kind of person I am. And then the people who also are like that and that you're compatible with will be attracted to you, if that makes sense. Sorry, that was like all over the place. But basically give off the energy you want to receive like, and be yourself and do the things that you're passionate about and the people who are compatible with you and who want to do those things and who are meant to be in your life will come to your life, if that makes sense. And my last thing is do more of what makes you happy. And this might be kind of like obvious and I probably don't need to say too much about this, but like do what makes you happy. Like if you love running or if you love painting, if you love singing, like do more of that. Like take time out of your day and reserve it for doing what you love. Just do what you love. Like it's just so important to like do more of what you're passionate about, what makes your soul happy and like just doing more of that. And I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people forget about, especially as a student. Like it's easy to get caught up in schoolwork and extracurricular things and so, you know, socializing and it's easy to forget that you need to spend time not only with yourself, but also doing things that make you really happy and that you're passionate about. So, do more of what makes you happy. 
And with all of this being said, obviously these things aren't going to work for everybody, And but this is just what I've learned from my journey with loving myself and confidence. And right now I'm like the happiest and healthiest and most social and like most me that I've ever been and I'm really thankful to be in the place that I am right now and to have the friendships and relationships I have and I'm just I'm in a really good place and so I thought I'd film this video and kind of share what I've learned along my way and what has helped me get to where I am today where I'm like in love with who I am as a person and not in like a conceited way I just I love who I am I love what I do and I'm really happy with my life and me as a person and what I've done to grow as a person and so I hope these tips and this really long video could help you in some way better yourself and learn to have more appreciation for yourself and love yourself and gain more confidence yeah so I hope this video helped you and I hope you enjoyed watching this in Hope you enjoyed watching me ramble about this because it's something I'm really passionate about and I've spent a lot of time with. And yeah, we're done. Thank you for watching.